Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, I'm Jim, and this video is about DxO Pure Raw version two, which just came out. I've got a copy, and I'm working through, kind of checking out what they're doing differently in this version. There are uh, speed improvements, it is faster. There are also some workflow improvements, especially if you're a Lightroom user. In addition, it also now supports Fuji files, which was a big hang up for Fuji users in the past. Let's get into it and take a look. If uh, you launch the product, the first screen you see, of course, is DxO Pure Raw 2, just kind of an empty screen. Now, this is a standalone version that I'm doing this demo on, and after this, I'm gonna show you a couple of workflow improvements. If you want to add photos, I've got a folder of images on my desktop, and I'm gonna go ahead and add those. Note that these are all raw files shot with Sony cameras. Now, one of the great things about DxO Pure Raw 2 is that they have all these optics modules. In fact, they have over 70,000, that's not an exaggeration, over 70,000 optics modules available. So that's for 70,000 different combinations of camera or lens. As you can see here, things will come up and it'll say, hey, you need to download this to take advantage of that optical correction. I'm gonna go ahead and just click and download these selections and bring these in to DxO Pure Raw. It's very quick, as you can see. I hit save and I'm done, and I've now got these four photos in and ready to process. So I'm gonna go ahead and click process, and you get your basic menu here, which is the same effectively as the menu before, which is you have different methods. You do here have optical correction options, including lens sharpening and distortion correction. I'm gonna leave those defaults. By the way, I'm gonna use Deep Prime as the raw processing method. That's their highest in and best method. And frankly, I don't really see a reason to use either of the other ones. My output format will be DNG. That's why I consider Pure Raw 2 and Pure Raw before it kind of a pre-processor. It allows you to pre-process these images. It's great for removing noise, of course, but also it's Pure Raw. It's not just denoise. It's uh, with the optic modules and the lens sharpness, you get a beautiful raw file output. So that's why I'm gonna go with the DNG. And I will stick these in the original folder as a subfolder. I'm gonna go ahead and click process and let that run. You can see in the bottom, there's a little slider going across and it indicates that there's about one minute remaining on the processing. As I said, I am seeing performance that is faster than the previous version and I'm running on an Intel-based Mac, not an M1. I believe it's even faster on an M1. Okay, so that is finished processing. It comes up and lets you know and it gives you a choice about what you want to do next. I personally, I want to view results. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna launch into the first photo and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and I'm gonna click two to one and I'm just gonna take a look at this photo. This is just a night scene, which is typical for what I like to shoot wandering around in cities in lower light. So I will often be shooting with a prime lens, fairly wide open aperture, and somewhat elevated ISO. This one I believe is uh, oh, 800, there we go. It's right here on the bottom, and it is shot at f1.8. But if you look at the quality of the raw file, it really is improved. You can see like where it says face covering required on this window, you can see that is crisper, the noise is cleaner. If you look over here where it says find my bus at this bus stop, I mean, honestly, that just looks fantastic. Here's another image of honestly just a car wash at night, not a big deal, but if you look at this, I mean, that brickwork just honestly looks fantastic. You can see that the noise is cleaned up, everything is crisper, and frankly, just much better looking. And if you look at the sky, the noise in the sky, and this is ISO 1000. I mean, look at that sky, it just, again, just looks absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna look at one more image and do a compare here. Okay, and this one is just a couple of gentlemen tuning up for a show, and look at that noise reduction and that sharpening, honestly. So that's what I'm talking about with DxO Pure Raw 2. This is a standalone demo workflow. I next wanna show you how workflow uh, has been improved with Lightroom and also just from the Finder window with on a Mac or the Explore window on a PC. But the bottom line is performance-wise, it's faster, and of course, the image quality coming out of it continues to just be amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and close the app because we're actually not gonna open the app anymore, even though we're gonna demo how the product works. You will notice, by the way, that in my folder here, that once I've created those files, it actually creates a DxO folder, and you can see that these are saved as DNG raw files. I'm gonna go ahead and trash that, and we're just gonna start over. So one of the major improvements is a workflow improvement, which allows you to go ahead and directly from the Finder window, pre-process in DxO. 
Now, in order to do that on a Mac, you have to go into System Preferences and go to Extensions and just make sure you come down here and click under DxO Pure Raw Finder Extensions. If you turn that on, this option will work, which is in the Finder window, highlight your images, right click, and you will see that you have a DxO Pure Raw option here now in your drop down menu. You're gonna have options for DNG, JPEG, last use settings, which is this last one here. But let's say I wanna go ahead and process DNG using Deep Prime. I will go ahead and do that. It will use the default settings, but it's gonna go ahead and run this in the background without even opening the app. This little dialog box will open and it'll show you that it is processing one of four images. And again, about one minute remaining, same as last time. So here we go, it's counting down about one second remaining and it's now complete. So once again, it's created a DxO subfolder within this folder on my desktop. And once again, you've got your DNG files here and you can see that the, these have all been processed with Deep Prime as it indicates in the name of the file. So that's a beautiful thing. That's a workflow improvement that frankly is very speedy. So again, that's why I call it a pre-processor. I think in the past, you'd have to go in and drag everything into DxO, do the processing, and then put them back in that folder and then import them to Lightroom or something like that. If you just wanna pre-process straight from the Finder window and you know you wanna run certain images or all of your images from a folder and take care of that before you do anything else with them, you can do that quickly and easily now thanks to this workflow improvement. And once again, I'm gonna go ahead and trash this. And what I wanna do is get Lightroom up here and show you a similar thing in Lightroom. Just as with the Finder window on that last example, you can now pre-process these from Lightroom without, again, even opening the app. So I can go in and I can highlight these four images, or in fact, in the name of, uh, or in the interest of speed, I will just do one, but I can take that one image and you can just right click and click down and go to export. And under export, you will see that you have an option to process with DxO Pure Raw 2. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and you will notice that it actually is gonna go ahead and process that in the background. It'll open this menu. You will get the same options as when you open it in the standalone app. I'm just gonna go with the defaults here and click process. Once again, you get a dialog box that tells you there's 20 seconds remaining, and it is processing this in the background in DxO Pure Raw 2 without opening the app separately. So that allows you to stay in your flow within Lightroom, process this in DxO, and then save it back here in Lightroom. So it's a definite workflow improvement. You'll notice the photo's not there, so you can just right click and you can synchronize folder, and it'll import one folder, synchronize, and I believe that I'm not a Lightroom expert. I believe it'll do that in a moment or two, but I like to kind of hurry up. Um, but you'll see it's created that DxO folder, and within that DxO folder is my Deep Prime DNG that I just processed. Again, I never left the workflow of Lightroom. I sent it over there. It did it in the background and brought it back for me. Now, if I wanna go look at that, you can see I've got two of these. Here's my Deep Prime and there's my original. Let me highlight those. I'm gonna click C to compare and I'm gonna to click to zoom in and you can just see the differences between these two files. Again, the DxO file on the left is sharper, crisper, cleaner, and just a more pure version of the raw file because it went through DxO Pure Raw 2. So that's the major changes and updates to DxO Pure Raw 2. It's faster, it supports Fuji files, and you've got massive workflow improvements either directly from the Finder window or File Explorer in Windows, um, and major workflow improvements from Lightroom where you can have the image get sent over and run or process in the background and come back into Lightroom without ever opening the app separately. So between the demosaicing, the denoising, the massive amount of optical corrections combinations, and the lens sharpness improvements, you get all that along with these workflow improvements and support for Fuji in this new update. It does sell for $129 new or $79 for an upgrade. I'll put a link down below if you wanna check it out. That's my first look at DxO Pure Raw 2. I hope it gives you some ideas in terms of how this works and what this update contains. Thanks for watching, my friends. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer and I'll see you in the next video. You guys take care of yourselves, and until the next time, adios.